The Lord be with you, beloved Pillar community and all who have wandered online and now become a part of this online virtual community with us. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors at Pillar. It's a gift to be with you in this way today, where we remember together you belong, you're forgiven, the Spirit is with you, where we claim again you are loved so much. Christ gave his life for you. We gather from a lot of different places, Wisconsin, California, New Hampshire, Nigeria, Uganda. We gather from so many different places geographically and also emotionally, spiritually. Some of you are in a place of deep contentment, others in a place of real anxiety, some with lots of faith, others lots of doubt. We come from a lot of different places. So I invite you with me to prepare your heart and mind. The bomb gardeners are going to welcome us and the ensemble will lead us. The Lord be with you, beloved Pillar community. We are the Baumgartner family and we miss you all so much. We can't wait to. Go play with our friends in Sunday school. But until then, let's worship together. The Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. All you who need now to His temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who is seated on high, who looks far down on heaven and on earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Let's continue with singing praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, prosper your work defend you. Surely his goodness and mercy will daily attend you. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do when with his love he befriends. sustains you.
Let's continue singing, Savior like a shepherd lead us. the psalmist from Psalm 113 says this, Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. When we are honest about the harsh realities of sin and the way that we can get so bogged down in feelings of regret and shame and guilt, it begs the psalmist's question, who is like the Lord our God? A God who reigns on high and yet still comes to us still comes down to the particularities of our world, of our lives, of our situations to offer peace and grace and forgiveness. So let's gather our hearts in prayer to pray to this God who comes to us, and we'll begin by singing.
Lord God, your name is great. Your nature is wonderful. Your goodness inexhaustible. You are God and King of all things and are blessed forever. And we, however, are the ones that need lifting up. Our lives are such that we need you to come down in your grace every day. Sanctify our souls and bodies and spirits. Calm our fears, cleanse our consciences, and drive out every evil thought, every selfish desire, envy, pride, hypocrisy, deceit, anxiety, arrogance, laziness, malice, anger, all that is contrary to your will. Oh Lord, since you love us all, give us the strength to boldly call on you in the freedom of Christ, without condemnation, with a pure heart, with undivided attention, with sanctified lips, as our holy God and Father in heaven, Lord, have mercy. Lord. Now hear this good news. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. Believe this and be at peace. Let's respond by singing together, who is like the Lord our God? Our Father, He lives from the ashes. He raises the poor and the lost. He seats them to dine at His table, to feast without money or cost. Saints, fix your eyes on the Savior and count all your righteousness lost. Be found in his love and his favor and share in his death.
Christ is our peace through his life and his death and his resurrection. And he's the reason, reason that we too would seek to be a people who are peacemakers and peacekeepers and reconcilers in our lives and in the world around us. And you'll do that in all the ways you do as you go about your week in life and in work. And we also seek to do that together as a community. In this season, we'd like to point you to a couple of things on our website First is a give link. If you are able to participate in the financial realities of the mission and the ministry of the church, we'd be grateful. There's also on our website a pillar responding to COVID link for unique opportunities that you can join in service uh, to our community that are found there. And then additionally, our Christ in the City summer series is also on the website with a whole list of the sessions that we've been coming around together concerning racial injustice and the church um, using a resource called The Color of Compromise by Jamar Tisby. You're invited to join us on our website. New episodes are uploaded uh, on Wednesday evenings. And then we also ask for your help as we anticipate moving back into the sanctuary for worship at Pillar on September 13th. We plan to have services at 9 and 10 and 11 with additional evening services geared towards college students. And we would be so grateful to know which service you would be most likely to attend. And if you plan to continue to join us online like you are now, um, we'd, we'd like to know that too. And there are options for you to choose a short survey that you can help us out with that's on our website. We'd be grateful. This morning we've been borrowing the refrain of the psalmist, praise the Lord. But all of our worship and adoration and praise come because God acts first. God puts the breath in our lungs to pour out praise. And as we prepare to hear the word of God this morning, a similar thing happens. God speaks to us through scripture and sermon and we have the opportunity to respond with all of our lives. And so as we prepare our hearts, let's sing together, Great Are You, Lord.
one single Bible verse and one stunning story. And then we'll make our way to the table in this way to feast on God's generosity in the bread and through the cup. Now, the one single Bible verse is my favorite. It's tucked towards the back of the Bible, the last book of the Bible, the second to last chapter, Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. It sounds like this, Behold, I am making all things new. It's Jesus seated on the throne in heaven, peering over the shoulders of time, shouting into your life, our day, this moment, Behold, I'm making all things new. which understandably might be a little difficult to embrace in a world pandemic in an election year with masks and distance and your heartache and your set of questions. So let me open its arms again. Jesus says, Behold, I'm making all things new. I'd understand if you're not quick to shout it in your dorm room or in your office cubicle, with anxieties high and depression dogging and confusion swirling. So let me say it for you. Behold, I'm making all things new. I get it. Maybe not the first verse that comes to mind when you read the headlines. Riots rioting and racial injustice rising and fires burning and guns firing and the economy bouncing and the coronavirus encroaching. So let me shout it for you. Behold, I'm making all things new. And just in case you think this is some act of Christian denial, a little opiate to calm our nerves amidst the chaos. Let me remind you, the one offering the words is Jesus himself, Jesus, the crucified one, Jesus, who went the way of the cross, who suffered and died to forgive and went to the grave to stare death straight in the face, punched it in the nose only to come up up in resurrection before ascending to heaven from where he'll come again to make all things new. And so he can say, behold, I'm making all things new. This is the eighth anniversary of the reestablishment of Pillar Church, established in 1847 by a band of Dutch immigrants trying to flee what they considered to be religious persecution and find some freedom of opportunity. They established a church in 1847. There was a bit of a division in 1882, and in 2012, I skipped a bunch of history. In 2012, we reestablished ourselves as a church for the city committed to reconciling divisions, raising up leaders, redeeming the city, and renewing the church up to the new thing God wants to do among us for the world. So as an act of celebration on our anniversary, I thought it would be a good idea to gather again around the one single Bible verse and stunning stories of God doing new things. Listen to this. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led them beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And there, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. The bush was burning, yet it was not consumed When Moses saw it, he said, I must turn aside to see this great sight, to see why the bush is not burned up. And when God saw that Moses turned aside, he called out to Moses from the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And God said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the ground on which you are standing is holy. God also said, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. God also said to Moses, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cry 
on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the misery of Egypt, to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, to the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And Moses said, who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the people out of Egypt. And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign that it is I who sent you. When you've brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And Moses said, if I come and say to the elders of Israel, The God of your ancestor has sent me to you, and they ask, what's his name? What shall I say to them? And God said, I am who I am. God also said, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my title for all generations. Go. Go. And assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared to me. He has given heed to you and what has been done to you in Egypt and will bring you up out of that misery to the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites to a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to you. You and the elders shall go to the king of Egypt and say, The God of the Hebrews has come to us. Let us go now a three-day journey into the wilderness to sacrifice to our God. I know, however, he will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders that I will perform in it. Then he will let you go. I will bring you into such favor with the Egyptians that when you go... You will not go empty-handed. Your women will ask their neighbors and any woman living in their neighbor's house for jewelry of gold and silver and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, and so you shall plunder the Egyptians. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's Exodus chapter 3. You can find it, if you'd like, on a smartphone with you or a Bible near you. It's the story of God doing something new. God doing something new with a man who had been wandering in the wilderness. Anybody know what it's like to wander in the wilderness? Something new in and with a man who had quite a past. Anybody haunted by their past? Something new in and with a man for a people to bless the world with a better day. Anybody looking for a better day? When God does something new, he descends. When God does something new, he invites. When God does something new, there's hope. When God does something new, he descends. Just to catch you up on the story of Moses, the Israelites had found their way to Egypt by way of Joseph, who had risen to prominence in the land. There was a change in order. A new pharaoh came to town. Joseph and the Israelites began to be oppressed for a very, very long time. Even the youngest boys born to Israelite women were threatened with their lives. So one mom took her special son, she, she put him in a basket, a basket made of bitumen and pitch, and she floated him down the river only to be found by Pharaoh's daughter, who picked him up and raised him as his, her own. He, that, that was Moses. Moses, like Joseph before him, ran, uh, rose to prominence in Egypt, but notice the inequity between the Egyptians and the Israelites. One day he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite, and it was more than his heart could take, so he went after that Egyptian, and he crushed him. He killed him, and he ran. He ran. He ran, found himself in Midian, He married. He was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. He led them beyond the wilderness 
to Horeb. And among the things God says out of that bush that was burning but not consumed, he says, I've observed the misery of my people. I've heard their cry. I know their suffering. And here's the point. I've come down. I've come down. I've come down to deliver. When God does something new, he descends. That's the way of God. At the very beginning, God, I'm imagining now, God stooped to a knee, formed the first man out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The new thing God did at creation required dissension. And then just a few like pages in the Bible later, when, when Noah was swimming in the swirling waters of the wickedness of the world, God stooped down again. God descended again and gave, a, gave an ark. And, and just a couple of pages later in the Bible, when Abram and Sarai, hearts broken because they couldn't have a baby, God descended again and made a promise, you'll have a boy. And when Ruth and Naomi, when their backs were against the wall, God descended again and gave them a family. And in the fullness of time, when the world was wallowing in its brokenness and sin and sickness and sadness, God stooped down again this time with his son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. He descended again to do something new through a cross, a grave, and resurrection. Behold, he says, I'm making all things new. So I'm guessing a few of you, what is it, month six of all of this, you, you, you know now, you've known anxiety, I want you to hear today, God stoops down to meet you in that place. That's the way of God, to do something new. I've been told, I've been told addictions are every kind on the rise. I want, you to, I want you to know now, God stoops down to meet you in that place for something new. It's been suggested to me that marriages that were on the brink before all of this are now hanging by a thread at best. I want you to know God stoops down to meet you there to do something new. That's the way of God. When God does something new, he descends. When God does something new, he invites. It's an intimidating invitation, I might add. God stoops down to Moses starts making promises. I'm going to bring you up out of that land to a, to a good and broad land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. And then he says, so come, I'll send you, Moses. Moses, the murderer. I'll send you, Moses. Mo Moses, the guy we, we'd find out in just a few pages later, Moses had a speech impediment. Moses couldn't talk so great, and he was going to be the spokesperson for freedom, and God said, I'll, I'll send you, Moses. When God does something new, he invites. He wants our participation. He wants us to get on in it with him. So love your neighbor, and be kind to your spouse, and stand up for justice and work for mercy, and be peacemakers and peacekeepers in the world, because the new thing God is doing in the world is an invitation for you to participate. So this is the eighth anniversary of Pillars Reestablishment. Uh, 2012, we were struggling. Pretty much by every metric you might measure a church's health, we, we were hurting. Numbers on Sunday mornings were way down. We were just hoping to find a teacher for Sunday school and meet the annual budget, which wasn't looking good. And they thought about closing the doors. They thought about giving the keys maybe to the city of Holland. It could be a really cool wedding venue, you know. But they're, they're prayerful and they're faithful and they're even kind of a little bit stubborn. So they decided not to give the keys away. They decided to, to pursue something different, to pursue something more. And God, in the way God would, just kind of started to revive this place and started to renew this place and new things started happening in this place and none of it is so that you can have a happier Sunday morning. None of it is so that we can be a bigger church. None of it is so that you can feel better about your church. All of it is so that we might be on mission with God in the world. The new thing God is doing in the world is an invitation to participation. Come. I'll send you. Actually, Moses has to go back to the place of pain, Egypt, to the scene of the crime. 
Come, I'll send you. Pillar, college student, single person, professor, teacher, business person, leader, anxious one, hopeful one, worried one, I'll send you. It's an invitation. I like these words from Leslie Newbegin. Since we're celebrating at our anniversary, might as well include a little Leslie Newbegin. If the gospel is to challenge the public life of our society, it will only be by movements that begin with the local congregation in which the reality of the new creation is present, known, and experienced, and from which men and women will go, that would be you, by the way, men and women will go into every sector of public life to claim it for Christ, to unmask the illusions which have remained hidden, and to expose all areas of public life to the illumination of the gospel. But that will only happen as and when local congregations renounce an introverted concern for their own life and recognize that they exist for the sake of those who are not members as sign, instrument, and foretaste of God's redeeming grace for the whole life of society. Come, I'll send you. The new thing God is doing in the world is an invitation. When God does something new, he descends, he invites, and there's hope. This is amazing to me. God stoops down to Moses, starts making promises. Moses appropriately asks, who am I? Who am I? And God says, God promises presence and hope. I'll be with you, and this will be the sign that it is I who sent you. When you've brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. What kind of a sign is that? After you won the game, then you'll know you won the game? After you're healed, then you'll know you've been healed? What kind of a sign is this? After you bring my people out of Egypt, then you'll worship God on this mountain? God does not snatch us out of the difficult circumstance, escape us from the pain, but rather offers presence and hope in the midst of it. I will be with you, and this will be the sign. You'll worship God on this mountain when it's all said and done. Presence and hope. I'll be with you. A better day is coming. A better day is on the way. A better day will rise. A new day will dawn. I'll be with you until that day. Keep hope. Keep hope. Hope is not a passive biding, waiting, waiting. Maybe someday it'll, it'll get better. Maybe someday it'll turn out all right. Rather, it's an inspiration for now. It's strength for today. Keep hope. I got a text message on Thursday morning. That was well, let me check. I think it was four, 449 from our dear friend, Bob Fisher. Uh, Bob with his beloved Marge, married for decade upon decade. He was a doctor, uh, reproductive medicine, kind of a pioneer in the field. L later in life, Bob and Marge would move to Freedom Village more recently, Marge, her mind slipping and her body weakening, was moved to the inn. They couldn't live together anymore. And then COVID happened, and he couldn't even visit her anymore for weeks and weeks. He couldn't visit his beloved Marge. The only thing he could do was her laundry, which they would have done, but he wanted to do. Her mind was slipping and her body was failing. It's been going on for a little while now, and I got a text 4.49 on Thursday morning, Marge passed away at 3.58 this morning and entered her heavenly home where she will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A new day, a better day. She will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's borrowing Psalm 23, the end of Psalm 23. Just before those lines are these, surely Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The great day, the better day, the resurrection promise that gives us hope is preceded by goodness and mercy every day. Goodness and mercy all day. Goodness and mercy, presence and hope. Presence and hope. The new thing God is doing in the world, there's hope. Keep hope pillar. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And here at the table, in this bread and through this cup, 
we get to taste it. The bread broken for us and for our salvation, the cup poured out for the forgiveness of sins, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy, presence and hope. If you believe Jesus is Lord, you're welcome at this table. If you're not at that place in life or faith or for other reasons, choose not to come in this virtual way. This is not a moment to shame anybody or judge anybody. It's an opportunity maybe for you to think about your life with God, where you're at with God, what, what is keeping you from this table. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the ensemble will lead us.
the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.